Hey y'all, what's up? It is Friday morning. It is actually a beautiful day here in Michigan, so I'm going to spend it inside in a basement doing some weird stuff uh, with y'all. Uh, not too many people in chat yet, but uh, hopefully that will change, but we're going to have some fun either way. We're going to be doing some uh, some fun sandy stuff today. I'm going to be working towards my stream overlay, which actually, if you look uh, right here, right, this area right here, uh, you can see that it's actually pulling in, um, well, you can't see this, but it is actually pulling in the next stream information from, uh, from sanity right now, which uh, we got working last week and then I decided I went ahead and I put our uh, local host for the overlays uh, to kind of go forward today so that we can see our code working live, which should be a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, I'm just hoping this will be a, a nice uh, chill stream today. Uh, I'm kind of curious. I'm not actually getting any of my music audio, which is sad for me. But uh, if you're in chat and you want to let me know uh, that you're getting audio, let me know how the level is because I can't hear anything right now. I'll go ahead and switch this over to our uh, to our screen share. Uh, so you can see I've already got this kind of pulled up. Um, this is actually the overlay that you see around us right now. So you should be getting some uh, pixel unicorn inception happening, uh, which is super fun. Uh, so some of the stuff that we did, oh, Brad Garapy with the clutch raid. How's it going this morning, Brad? I saw that you and James were doing some awesome stuff uh, in your stream. Uh, I, I saw that a few minutes ago. Uh, how, how was your stream? How, how are things going? As well as everyone else uh, from uh, Brad's stream, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I hope that y'all are interested in some weird and wonky stuff that we're going to be doing today. Uh, definitely things that... Uh, I just started thinking about last week, so we'll hopefully get some cool uh, interactions happening. Uh, cool, music's playing, excellent. My music is not, so y'all enjoy the music um, while I sit here in silence listening to just my voice. Um, so yeah, so what we're doing today is we are uh, playing with Sanity, uh, which if you don't know, I'm a DevRel at Sanity, so this is weird stuff for my day job kind of um hopefully uh Knut, who is in chat i think uh agrees uh cool uh let's see brad said me and james were screwing around with obs layouts cool yeah yeah so you were doing something very very similar to what i'm doing messing around with uh with some uh some layouts awesome so yeah um i actually have uh locally running i haven't actually deployed this studio uh, but this could be something that's literally living on Netlify or Vercel or uh, anywhere that can host like a React app since the studio is just a React app. Uh, I actually have our stream details uh, pulling in. So you can actually see uh, this is the stream that we're working on today. Uh, and you can actually see that again. Let's see, it's it's all the way over there, real far over there. Uh, you can see my uh, the working with Sanity and Twitch overlay uh, title pulling in. We did that last week. We got working. I did some work in between. Um, very mainstream and not weird at all. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I mean, hey, if Learn with Jason can do this, certainly it's mainstream at that point. Um, which, if you missed it, uh, I was on Learn with Jason last week and we talked about 11D. It was mostly about that, but we talked a little bit about the Twitch stream beforehand uh, and pulling in data via Sanity for that. So it is actually not like super weird, but like, I, I want to get a little wonkier with it today. I'm hoping to push some stuff around. Uh, oh, you're already, already redeeming pixel food, uh, tech gadget. CSS is fun. You want me to go on a CSS fun fact? Um, let's see. Did you know that you can do physical distances in units in CSS? So, you know, everyone's familiar, I hope with the fact that you can do pixels, right? 5px equals 5 pixels on the screen, although it gets a little wonkier when you're dealing with uh, with high DPI screens. Uh, but you can actually also do inches, you can do centimeters, you can do uh, millimeters, I think. Uh, you can do all that stuff in CSS uh, as length units, uh, which is super fun, uh, especially if you want to do um, non-web styling in CSS. Uh, so if we're going, we'll go in here real fast. No, not W3 schools, no one wants to go there. MDM, there we go. Uh, you can actually come in and let's see, a uh, centimeter? Yeah, here we go, like one centimeter, which is technically there's like a, a ratio that it calculates it to, millimeter, uh, inch, 
all these things kind of have you know their non real world uh, applications. Uh, but you can also, if you didn't know this, if you're doing a print style sheet, uh, if you use 100 VH, which is viewport height, 100 VH meaning 100% of the viewport height, you're going to get a page break every 100 VH. So if you want to insert a page break, you can do that by specifying a certain area is going to be 100 VH, and that will be one page of your document when it prints. Um, Prints XML? I don't even know what that is, Canute. What's what's that? Yeah, also useful for, for scroll hijack sites, although I can't stand scroll hijack. It hurts my brain. Um, so yeah, uh, I think theoretically, I don't have this listening, so it's just going to be like a, a refresh, but if I were to actually change this to like say today, colon, working with sanity, publish that, um, and we'll come over here and we'll refresh this page. And you'd think that would be there, but you might be wrong. Let's see. Let's take a look at our data and how we're pulling that in. So I now, I've also like refactored the code a little bit. It's still on the spaghetti side of things, but it is at least broken up into some separate files. I have a sanity fetch area uh, where we can grab the data. And I just kind of want to see what data I'm getting here and validate some assumptions that I'm working through. Always best to make sure that you don't assume too much. Oh, it was just, it took a second, that's fine. Uh, it, it's already there today, working on that. And then in theory, I'm not gonna show you all this because last time I tried to show Streamlabs OBS on stream, it crashed my stream, but uh, I can actually come in and I can refresh the cache of my current page uh, for the overlay and it'll actually pull that in. So every time my overlay initializes, I get that new data. So it's a little weird because I put the word today in the SVG down there and stuff like that, but uh, but it's there and we don't need this console log. We, we have it working. We just assumed the wrong things. Um, so a few things that we did last week, we pulled that in. We're also pulling in uh, my soap boxes. You can see here, soap boxes uh, is equal to data.rants. And what that's doing is that's coming over and I've got chat actions. Um, so when you redeem pixel, uh, pixel food, right? Which uh, Tech Gadget did earlier to get my CSS fun fact. Uh, you can also redeem pixel food to get me to go on a rant. Uh, this is a rant request. And that pulls a from a random list of things inside of my sanity data now. It was just a, a static array hanging out in my code, uh, but it now pulls from a random list pulled from Studio. Uh, what, what was the soapbox that it actually said? Um, let's see, I guess I wasn't paying attention to what Pixel was saying, so that's, that's on me. I didn't actually see what it was, but uh, if we look in Studio, we can see uh, Pixel data. So I've got like some interactions, and actually I've got a musical choice interaction that can happen. Um, I haven't put that data in here yet, but you can see CSS gets no respect, rule of least power, servers are a pain. So I have all these and then all I'm doing is after I ingest those into the overlay code, I'm just grabbing a random array uh, item from it and, uh, and displaying that every time somebody redeems that. So that's all cool. Uh, but one thing that I'm interested in, and we're gonna try to, to, to muddle our way through it a little bit today, because uh, I, I don't think anyone's interested in watching me just like copy and paste my uh, my music array up here <laughs> into uh, in the Sandy Studio, but uh, I kind of want to track when these get fired and put some data onto my stream uh, document about how many uh, pixel foods were redeemed, maybe uh, what username redeemed them. Um, maybe break it up by interaction type. I'm, I'm not entirely sure exactly what I want there, uh, but I do know that I want to record that. And and the cool thing is, you know, there, there's a, a common misconception that uh, Sanity is a, is a headless CMS. And while we do have a headless CMS in there, we can do a whole lot more with that. Um, so I want to push data into it that's like analytic type data metrics into uh, into studios that I can keep an eye on that and then maybe use that on my site to say, 
you know, on this stream, uh, 10 people redeemed pixel food, 10 people fed pixel in other words. Hey, Colby, welcome to the stream. I hope, I hope you're, uh, uh, excited for the weird and wonky. It's definitely going to get there. So, um, so the next thing, the, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up probably a, a, just a small function that's going to push certain types of data over to my stream details. And like, I need to access the current stream document, which I'm getting, that's how I'm displaying it. So I need to save that in, in memory to, uh, uh, to use elsewhere. Uh, but then I'm using the, uh, the JavaScript client uh, API that we've got, and I'm going to be specifically looking around not creating documents because we already have the document. We are going to be patching uh, our document, but we're going to be doing it, where is it, uh, with a set of missing as well to make sure that like on the fly, uh, we're good to go with that. So, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to patch our document. This example, they're using a, a bike, um, like a bike shop e-commerce type thing. Uh, so in our case, we're going to be patching the current document ID that we have. Uh, and we're going to be setting a field inside of that that's going to be, maybe we'll, we'll start with a simple thing and just increment um, the amount of interactions that happen. Uh, but we'll see exactly what that's going to turn out to be uh, as we kind of get there. Uh, so let's make a new file since I've actually broken this up. Uh, and we'll make a new file called... Um, metric push? I don't know. I'm, I'm like, you know, they say, they say naming is the hardest thing in development. I'm honestly just really bad at that as well. Um, so for the most part, I think we're just going to export a function, uh, module exports, not exports, module exports equals a function. That function is going to need to take in, uh, what do we want? We want, you know, we don't actually need anything for this function if we're just going to be pushing. We'll, we'll separate this into separate functions later, I think. But if we're just pushing a count to see how many times we are uh, um, having an interaction, uh, then we don't really need anything uh, inside of our arguments there. Um, we do need our client. So uh, const sanity client is going to equal require... Uh, where do I have that? That's inside utility, so we're already there. Sanity client. Uh, I don't think I need anything else there. Uh, we do need our current stream, which where am I getting that from? We're fetching it here. This is the current stream. Uh, so we could destructure that. Let's see, so metric push. Um, const current, what's it called? It was called stream data, stream data equals require uh, sanity fetch. Oh, that's wrong up here. I don't need, this is sanity client. All right, I don't think that's gonna give us any errors. Uh, so then let's see if we have what we want log stream data and all right, so we've got an object. That's not the right object. I got too many console logs. That's what we got going on here. I was doing, a, I actually did some of this last night because I wanted to have cleaner code for the stream today. Um, so let's get rid of some console logs because we don't need those. Those are getting in our way now. So we don't need that. Certainly don't need that anymore. Don't need to log our soap boxes. Uh, make sure to save that. Console log words. <laughs> That's from forever ago. All right. Chat actions. I do want to keep those so I can see those happening. Compose screen. That's fine. I don't really need that anymore. Uh, all right. Chat action, compose screens, app. All right, refresh. We still have a data somewhere in there. That's, all right, uh, that's it. It'll be data. Okay, that's inside of sanity fetch, that's fine. Let's get rid of that for now. Uh, and then inside of, where are we? 
not client, close out things we don't need. All right, and metric push. So we're not actually calling this anywhere. That makes sense that this wouldn't be running at that point. Uh, so what we actually want to do is when a chat action happens, we want to fire this. So we'll need to require it here. Uh, const, uh, I suppose we probably import uh, metric push from uh, we'll go up a layer slash utils slash metric push. And then theoretically, what we want to have happen is when someone requests, we'll start with something simple. We'll start with like some random one down here. CSS fun facts. Everyone loves a CSS fun fact. So uh, somewhere in this switch case, we want to fire that. All right. So theoretically, someone feeds pixel, add, ask for a fun fact. I need to actually put text in, which is a limitation. And all right, we're getting undefined. All right, that's fine. That's that's probably what I expect. Sandy fetch. What am I actually? I ran into this last night when I was breaking this apart. Uh, what do I actually want to pull out of here? That's in app.js. Uh, this is probably closer to what I want down here. Uh, so, all right, sanity data is requiring that. It's then a function that I can grab. This is probably where it'd be nicer to have this in like an actual framework and, and be able to have some state management outside of what I'm currently uh, working with. All right, so this is sanity fetch. I need to be inside of metric push. Uh, we're not actually going to be doing it this way. Stream data. This will be let's move this. Uh, let's leave it here for now. All right, and let's get a CSS fun fact redemption. All right, and all right, we're getting the full data back. Uh, let's see, and we don't want that. We want just what we want. So we'll do uh, const, uh, what's it called again? That was called stream data uh, equals await which again, terrible naming, uh, fetched data. That's again, not a great name, but we'll flow with it. Uh, and then we'll pull in stream data here and redeem another fun fact. All right. All right, so now we have this, uh, but I don't have the reference because I'm not pulling the reference in my grok query. Uh, so uh, let's see, let's go to our studio. Let's go to the stream details. Let's inspect it. And we'll want this ID because uh, that ID is how we're going to update it. Uh, so inside of sanity fetch, we need our stream data to return our ID as well as the other information. And now, again, if you've never tuned into the stream before, I'm a very visual learner. I love console logs, even though I know they're not necessarily the best way of debugging all this. All right, there we go. We've got an ID now, which we should be able to pass that ID as our patch. Uh, as our document for patching. Uh, so if we come in here and look at the documentation, you can see we call our client and we call the patch method on that client and we're gonna pass that the ID. 
Uh, what way is there to debug other than console log? My favorite, and actually you, you didn't get to see this because it was last night. I, I had like the traditional, right? The traditional horrifying debugging, which was just like, I'm inside this function. Uh, just because I, you know, that's the way I roll. Cool, cool, cool. So uh, now when that chat action fires, we want to patch the data. So th thanks to both Colby and James there for, for backing me up on, uh, on the proper way of debugging JavaScript. Definitely console logs. Um, all right, so we need to open up our sanity client and we need to patch a document. We need our document ID. Uh, yeah, the music stopped. Uh, I'm not entirely sure why. It's because it looks like it's theoretically coming through my headphones and no longer my multi-output device, but I don't get to hear any of it for whatever reason. I suppose I could find like my corded headphones and plug those in and I get to hear them. Uh, the music should be restarted. Uh, so we'll pass in our stream data.id. Uh, data.id. And that this will do nothing because we're patching nothing. Uh, then we want to uh, figure out our data on this. So we're gonna patch our document. Our document is the current stream in Studio. Uh, and I wanna create a field on it on the fly that's going to be metric count or uh, I guess uh, engagement count perhaps. Uh, that we will increment, increment if exists. Um, so we will set if missing. We'll give um, we'll give it a value of one if it's missing. So set if what was it? set if missing, uh, and then that's going to take an object, and that object is going to have our field name that we want. So we'll call it. Uh, engagement, we'll just call it engagement. Buzzwordy enough, right? Engagement, and we're gonna set that to one. We want it to be a numeric field so that we can use the increment um, inside of the client. You can see here we've got increment and, de and decrement, decrement? What do y'all say? Is it a long E or a short E? Uh, anyway, we want to increase it or decrease it. Um, based on um, if someone is interacting right now just with um, just with this one engagement criteria. Uh, short E for James. Yeah, de decrement sounds not great, but decrement also sounds horrible. So like, I don't like either of them. We will increase or decrease our uh, our field if we uh, if an engagement is happening. Um, so uh, set if missing engagement to one, uh, and then we will increase. Yeah, not great is better than horrible. I agree with you. Uh, we'll, we will increase our engagement by one um, if it ex if it exists already, which if that syntax is right. Increment, yeah, I think that's right. Morning, Landon, how's it going? How are you doing this morning? I, 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 I'm making the assumption by you saying good morning that it's morning in your in your time zone. Uh, I have to get used to that. It is morning here, and it's a good morning so far. Uh, I think we're 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 gonna see we're gonna see how how error heavy I get in the next few minutes on whether or not it is a good morning or a not so good morning. All right. So let's walk through the logic real fast. Uh, somebody hits CSS fun fact. It fires this function. This function goes and grabs the stream data ID, the current streams ID uh, from the Sanity API. Uh, if there is not an engagement field, it sets it to one. If there is an engagement field, it increments it by one. That makes sense to me. I think that's what I want it to do. Uh, I think everything is saved. So let's see how bad this errors. Let's see if I broke things or if I'm gonna get it right on the first try. CSS fun fact redemption. 
please work. All right, so uncaught and promise. That's not this. I probably should put some sort of like error handling and some like, you know, this worked kind of thing uh, inside of everything. All right, it's not gonna show up here. I need to probably provide a spot for it. But let's take a look at something else real fast. Uh, let's see, vanity fetch. You can also inspect. All right, so we didn't actually set anything there. We didn't patch it. You like that, James? Please work. It it, it certainly did not. Um, but it, ne it never hurts to ask your code politely to work, even if you're asking it in chat to politely work. Uh, 10.16, yeah. That was fun. That was exciting. All right. Close out history. And inspect. Yeah. Cody knows Friday and you want to clock out, but can you please just work? I like it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't even need it. I'm, 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 I'm going to say I want to work more than once because I want to work on this and I also want to work on other things. Let's make sure I fired the right event. I suppose I did, right? Because it, it fired that data. Um, uh, all right. So let's close out that. Metric push. And then I can't remember if this is thenable. All right. So client, run the action. I don't want to delete. For name. Okay. So oh oh yeah yeah you gotta commit it you gotta. Commit. You know I was looking at at this screen. And then Canute's just right there saying, hey, you know, maybe go a little further in the documentation and you'll see that there's this whole idea that like, once you make the patch, you actually need to like do something with the patch, uh, AKA commit it. So yeah, um, you know, just go one step farther there, right? Uh, and then let's catch everything that's happening. Let's just grab the boilerplate and see. What all we get? Oh. Keep things indented properly here. Indent that. Uh, I like how it's a whole lot of stuff just happened. Uh, let's just say the patch happened and then let's actually put that response object because I'm kind of curious to see that, that happen. Uh, so patch happened. Uh, and then log out our response. Don't actually care about this right now because of that. All right, so. All right, no new errors on the page. Let's do a CSS fun fact. I'm gonna say I'm supremely confident this time. All right, we at least have an error now. That is that is a step above where we were last time. Uh, I like errors, as it turns out. They tell you so much. All right, so, all right, we posted, and then the mutation failed, mutation failed on document, that document with insufficient permissions. I thought I was using, all right, I'm going off screen. Thought I had updated my key to a right key, but I'm gonna take a look at that. That will be off screen, because you hooligans will totally write to my um, overlay if I don't. So let's see, I'm 
just so I can, I'll, I'll narrate what I'm doing off screen over here. I'm gonna go into my manage.sanity.io. I'm gonna go into um, settings, into API settings. I'm gonna check. I created a writer token. Unfortunately, I can't confirm nor deny that I'm using the right one. So I'm gonna make a new one, overlay right. And we're gonna give it right permissions, add the new token, grab the new token, bring my code off screen as well. So I can go into my .env file, since I'm using the .env package from uh, NPM, save that, close it. So again, you can't see it and bring it back over. Um, so we have updated that. Hey, thanks for the sub, uh, the Trish Prime sub. Uh, Peruvian Idol. Uh, that means that you get the uh, amazing pixel heart emoji that you can use across the Twitch platform. So be sure wh whoever you're watching knows that you love them and the pixel loves them too. Uh, it's available to you in the emotes across all of Twitch. And again, thank you for that subscription. And thank you for Amazon Prime for allowing people to just do that for free. That's super awesome. All right, so Sanity Client, I have, yeah, there it is. Nice job, nice use of the, the heart emoji. Love it. Uh, let's see, so let me make sure I'm pulling in process.env.sanitykey. That's what I want. Project ID, data set. I'm gonna go ahead and not use the CDN on this. Not that that should matter, but I think that was probably why I had that slight delay earlier uh, when we were talking about stuff. CDN's great for actual like live sites. This is my overlay. I don't necessarily need it to be uh, super cached, super speedy. Refresh the page. Uh, let's let's actually, uh, you know what I'm thinking? I'm wondering if I never restarted uh, parcel and I'm wondering if my environment variables don't get updated unless parcel restarts. That's why I'm gonna I'm gonna operate under that assumption. We'll see uh, if this works better. I changed multiple variables, right? Like uh, this is terrible science. I tested. I, I went ahead and changed the actual key, and I'm testing this other assumption at the same time. I would not make it as a scientist. All right. So that's restarted. Refresh our browser. Also, uh, shout out in chat, like uh, when you refresh your browser and go around your browser cache, how many times do you actually hit refresh? Because for me, I hit refresh about 18 times when I want that to happen. I know that that doesn't actually do anything extra, but it's old habit. Uh, so how many refreshes equals one actual cacheless refresh? Um, <laughs> thanks Colby, I appreciate that, you do. You have to spam it, you have to spam it hard. Um, hit the F5 until it worked. Yeah, I, I do, I'm on a Mac, right? So I do uh, Command Shift R, uh, which in Safari pulls up reader mode. And I get angry every time I do anything in Safari when I go to, to do that. And it's not what I expect to have happen. All right, um, squirrel aside, uh, let's see. What do we need to do? We need to test our CSS fun fact, right? CSS fun fact. I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna say test because every time I've done anything with confidence, it's failed. All right, transaction failed. Yeah, it does not like my permissions. I don't have update permission. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Let's see. Access control. All right. So what I've been giving is read write, but that's create. It says create update delete. Let's see. This is this is for a user though, not necessarily a token. This is for a token. All right. Create session tokens. Some group document. Hmm. 
Uh, are you sure it picks? Up? You know, that's that's a fair question. It has in the past. Uh, back when I was doing all this with Twitch, I've got my Twitch key in there. Um, so I feel like it does, but that is a that is a mighty fair question. Um, yeah, I guess I guess would it? Let me just put you know something random here. Would it error if? there was a token that was a bad token like if you leave it blank you get an anonymous user um, but if you like are like this is definitely a secure token i feel like i would love to let's maybe 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 it says that in the uh in the error and i just wasn't paying attention to the error response body unauthorized Yeah, because I feel like when I'm pulling the data, if I had a bad, if I had a bad token, wouldn't it also give me some sort of problematic error at that point? Um, let's take some things off screen again, real fast, and let's do our old friend. Y'all just kind of hang out and look at this uh, this lovely. Uh, set of code that is this is actually the studio code in the background here uh we haven't had to, to access it this time around we set some schema in it last week okay, let's pull that up real fast so you can just kind of gaze in breathless wonder down here at my uh at my very simple schema while i look and console log something up here uh off screen so save that and let's see i want to init console log Process ENV sanity key. Well, I'm definitely getting the key. The key is coming through uh, into the front end. It may not be happening properly with how I'm calling it. Let me get away from all that. Refresh the page. Bring it on back down. Go back into chat, see if anyone's had insight. No one's had insight. So it should, yeah, yeah, it definitely should with the right token. The right token should be everything I need for that. Um, so all I did was in my init uh, console log out my client or my uh, my process.env token. Put it, put it right here uh, for those of you who are curious. Um, so something's going wrong. With maybe how I'm using the client. We've got it set up here. I'm exporting it out. We know we know that the function is getting into into our into our new function, into our metric push function, because otherwise we wouldn't get the error. So we know it's hitting here. Um. Hmm. Mm hmm. I just wonder what this is actually, what it actually has at this point. I mean, I've got the client. Patch happened. What? The, the, but, the, the. Why didn't that work before? Why didn't that work before? Why does it work now? Y'all, y'all. Development is weird. So, it worked. See, it even says, it says, the patch happened. And we get a response back from it. What the what? I'm angry about that, to be perfectly honest. I'm angry about it. Like, that's unfair that I just spent like 10 minutes debugging something that, yeah, here we go. Yeah. Un unknown field, right? Like there's, there's things happening that studio doesn't know about and studio wants to know about it, um, so that it can show it off. Um, but I will want to make this, 
a, a read only uh, field. So let's take a look at that real fast. Uh, let's pull up some docs because I am terrible at syntax. Yeah, new, uh, keep development weird, definitely. That's a that's a shirt idea. Um, ooh, I, I should make a shirt and actually have the uh, the pixelated pixel unicorn saying that. That would maybe that's maybe that's too much. Maybe that's overkill. Um, all right, so we want to go into Studio, and we want on our stream details a new field that will be. You know, VS Code, we ran into this last week too. I really, these helper, these helpers are nice. I like them, but like, they get in my way when I'm trying to like read one line above. Title, engagement. What's what's like the, uh, what would be the biggest buzzwordy field title for this? Like, engagement, audience engagement statistics. Audience engagement statistics if you, have a, if you have a better idea let me know in chat name this we'll just name this engagement uh, type will be I'm gonna guess that there's a type called number I should probably just pull up the docs just to confirm but I'm gonna guess and we'll see how that goes uh, and then I do actually need to pull up the docs because I actually don't remember how to uh, make it write only so or write only read only um, fields Naming things, I love that. That's actually, like I said, hardest thing ever, right? Uh, schema types. You should make a custom input component that does something fun with those numbers in the studio. Yeah. So, so can you, one of the things I, I kind of want to do is I want to break this up too. So I want to uh, accept this. Like I think engagement count is cool. Like this will be how many how many times pixel has been fed. Maybe even I could put something in there that like shows like pixel munching on something. But like I, I also want to break it up so that I can see like everything throughout it. Plus I have to figure out what would that fun thing be? Confetti when it changes? Yeah. But like then I'd have to be like looking in the studio to actually see the cool stuff. Like I'd have to, have to pull it up and be like, woohoo. Uh, or maybe when, when you hit a uh, uh, an engagement threshold, every time you pull up the document, like it, it, like it does like a zoom effect on like a, an icon and it's like, Woohoo! Like you hit 25, you know, pixel foods. Um, read only is the Boolean that we need. What the what? I tried to copy and paste and it's a link. All right, let's see. Read only. I just want to copy and paste it, yo. All right, we'll type it. We'll type it. That's fine. We're okay. Read only. Set to true. Now, let's see, compiling. My tea has gone cold. Michigan basement life right there. Need to get one of those uh, electronic warmers, maybe make it USB powered, even though I have no USB left, or at least powered USB left. Do they make a USB-C powered tea warmer? We anchored them so it's possible to link them. So, so can you, like, I, I like that it, that it jumps for anchors, but like, I think it'd be more like we want to be like for like, um, like that hover state when you can like click to grab it. I think that would probably be like, when you hover over this, you get like a little icon over here. That's the link. Um, cause I'm a copy and paster now. I'm not sure. Right. Um, yeah. Holly in the road. That'd be, that'd be nice. Um, I'm just, I like copying and pasting, so. <laughs> I always typo, so why uh, why risk it? All right, so we recompiled. Studio now has, look at this, two engagements. All right, let's see what happens when we try to make it three. I'm not gonna look at, at the overlay. We'll see the overlay happen up here. Um, I'm not gonna look at the console logs, even though I desperately want to. I'm going to redeem a chat, or a CSS fun fact. This will definitely work. So Pixel says, this will definitely work. And look, right here, on update, there are now three engagements. That's, I mean, I, I, I know I work at Sanity, 
right? But like, that's super neat. Like that's that's neat. Uh, oh, make it four. See, but here here's the problem with that tech gadget. Since you redeemed it, I have to actually go in and do it. What did it say? CSS is what? CSS is something. I need to actually push that back into chat so I keep a, a record of it. Oh, but that didn't. Oh, you you redeemed a rant. Right now, I only had this set up. So that's the next thing we need to do. This only uh, does CSS fun fact right now. Um, but we need to go back in to our overlay and we need to fire this function on each of those. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, Tech Gadget, did you see what 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 uh, what rant do you want? Uh, did you see the, uh, the random one that came up? Was it CSS is amazing? Because it is. I, yeah, I missed it too. Yeah, I need to, I need to, to work better with that. Um, Cause right now it flashes that like pixel thing, pixels talking and that's super cool. Um, but it goes away cause it shouldn't just hang out up there. So basically all I'm doing now is I'm copying and pasting this function. This function will get fired every time uh, a custom reward of, of any of the types that I have interactions for uh, gets fired. So let's make sure we've got CSS fun fact. We already had that one. Uh, Pixel speaks, which will be working while I have a browser up. Um, so if you do want Pixel to speak, uh, now that I say that, that will also count towards uh, towards my engagement metrics. Um, so let's try that real fast. Since it's up in the background, we should hear Pixel speak when we do Pixel speaks. Um, Brian is amazing. He made this work. Awesome. Brian, that's amazing. He made this work. Come on, Pixel. Don't let me down. I probably can't hear that. Oh yeah, that's right. my earphones aren't working. Did did Pixel actually speak? Chat, let me know. But you can see, look, engagement statistics. You didn't hear it? Okay, so the issue with my Pixel Speak stuff. Oh you okay, so some are hearing it, some aren't. So um, as it turns out. The OBS browser source is a version of a browser. I think it's I think it's Chrome. Uh, yeah. It, so right now that the audio is being powered by the same audio that is powering the music that you're hearing. So if I turn, I can actually let's turn down the music and I'll turn up that input. Um, basically, it's coming through as my computer audio because OBS can't doesn't isn't capable of running. Where is this? Isn't capable of running. Uh, the text to speech uh, functionality, speech synthesis. The browser that powers OBS's browser sources does not run uh, this JavaScript function. It it just doesn't do it. Uh, so if I have the browser open with it and I'm routing the audio through, it'll come through. Um, so right now it's being routed through audio input capture. Um, with all this stuff, and it's supposed to take the uh, the words, create a new utter. I should have called it utterance, not utter, but uh, creates a new utterance, and then runs it through window speech synthesis dot speak uh, for that entire thing. And I, and I sped it up um, because uh, and raised the pitch, right? So it's, I think it's like double speed because of the one I could be wrong about that. That might be normal speed. Uh, it's at least as fast as I talk. Uh, and then it raises the pitch to make it sound like a kind of like. Um, so I'm actually going to let's see. I really wish I really wish I could hear my music because like I'd probably talk a little slower if I could actually hear it. Uh, but yeah, so you can for 500 cupcakes, you can uh, you can have Pixel say something. Uh, I should probably make that more. Um, but yeah, some, somebody uh, somebody redeem something. Uh, somebody redeem uh, something cool. And I'm gonna watch as my my audience engagement statistics go on the rise. Soapbox, soapbox for CSS is awesome. Although I think that might be stuck. Um, so uh, yeah, CSS is amazing, um, and you should use it, and you shouldn't use like huge frameworks around it. You should use what you know. Uh, but CSS uh, used to be a mired muck in the early 2000s to like 2012 era. Uh, but with the addition of CSS3 and the coming of age of layout mechanisms inside of CSS, 
Uh, it is truly amazing to work with. You can do so much grid, flex together, it means that we can do almost any layout we can think of. You can do cool, um, uh, cool things like uh, like gradients in the background that use blend modes. Uh, you can do after elements. You can add iconography. You can do so much inside of CSS. That's just it's an amazing thing. And here's our engagement metrics at five. Cool. Uh, so I may go a little deeper. I think I've still got a little bit of time that I'm happy to uh, to keep devoting here. I may look to see if maybe I'll make an array field inside of here to show each engagement that happens and log into it the Twitch username, the engagement type, and I don't know, maybe just that. So it would be an array of objects that I would log into, into this. So let's think about that. Uh, also, now that I'm, now that I'm, I'm feeling a little a little weird about it, I think that my CSS uh, my soapbox code is broken. Test to see if this is CSS is awesome. Yeah, that's not pulling a random a random soapbox anymore. I bet I'm initializing that, and I'm not actually firing it when the request is happening. That doesn't sound right. One more test. Maybe, maybe this is one of those occurrences, right, where randomness is actually things in a row. Uh, check. One, two, three. Okay. Yeah. No, no. That was just, that was actual randomness in action, right? Sometimes truly random things, even though this isn't truly random because it's just JavaScript math, uh, will repeat. So we're fine. We're all good. We're a-okay. So. No worries there. Uh, all right, metric push. Um, so, I think for now, we'll keep it all in this one exported function. Uh, let's go ahead and make a function up here that we'll call in. Function will be, um, this thing function uh, is going to be, uh, engagement increment because increment is okay. I can say increment, no problem. Uh, and then our engagement increment will be the stuff that we just did. And then after that, uh, let's, let's not, uh, do we need to grab that. No, we're going to be using this. No, we do need that. So yeah, that's fine. Let's pass that in uh, up here. And then let us keep things a little tidier. And we'll call that function, which is engagement increment, uh, pass it our stream data. And this shouldn't do anything different. Let's confirm our assumption on that. CSS. Uh, let's not do, C I keep doing CSS fun fact. Let's do, uh, that's my jam. Uh, this is awesome. Uh -oh. Okay, so yeah, that was actually supposed to be red. You can see down here, I have a I have a uh, a problem in my in my text to speech code. That's that's what that is. That's why Pixel wasn't speaking before. Oh my goodness, that blew up chat. Why did that fire three times? I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to just not worry about it. But wow, that fired three times. That's not ideal. Um, okay, so that worked. We still have it working here, so that's good. Let's make a new function. Uh, I know I, I made that async up there and I'm not using an await, uh, but I'm also not returning anything, which I probably should, uh, but that's fine. Uh, async function, um, register engagement type, engagement info. 
We'll need stream data and we'll also need the uh, type, I guess we'll call it type. Uh, and we're gonna have to get that type when we pass it in. So we need to pass in the engagement type, which we will pass to our register engagement info as the second argument stream type or stream data comma type. Type is not a good word. I should not be using type as my variable there. Um, point type. All right, that's fine. Let's make sure we end up getting it when it fires. All right, so we're gonna register that even though our register function won't do anything quite yet. Uh, register engagement stream data gets passed in there, that's fine. And then point type. And the point type we're gonna get from the actual, we don't need to post screen, uh, from chat action. So inside of chat action, we will look at our switch statement and we need to pass in I mean, bang, howdy, do I not want to pass this? This is actually the ID that Twitch uses for uh, this um, message type, right? If, a, if it has a flag that's a custom reward, the custom reward has the um, ID attached to it. Um, and this would actually be, I'm not gonna do it today because I'll have to figure out how I want to do it. This would be where a custom, Colby, did that work? Did you, did you get to hear your message? I hope so. Um, so yeah, so uh, let's actually go back over and confirm. Uh, looks like it didn't air out. Yeah, cool. Uh, really probably, that's a that's a dangerous one. Like I, that should probably, mm, I, I trust a, a lot of the people that come in here because I know a lot of y'all like, you know, personally, right? Like personally on the internet, but like, if, if this if this stream grows, probably want to want to add that to a moderation queue, perhaps, because um, you can do that. There's there's something I don't know if you can do just a, a single one into the moderation queue, or if you have to do all the ones into a moderation queue. But like, you can set up a moderation queue for for point redemptions. Um, let's see. Oh, there go my uh, my AirPods. Do 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 do. Let's see. So I'm not going to pass these in. That sounds awful. Um, even though I probably should, and I should probably set up a custom field um, inside of uh, my studio code to take that and like provide a little bit more clarity around it. Uh, but for now, uh, we'll pass in to our metric push. Uh, this is rant. Let's make it a string. Uh, this one is music. This one is speech. Uh, we'll have to say speak, I think is better there. And this one is uh, CSS fun fact. Um, and you know what I just did? I just did some of these as double quotes. Consistency is nice and probably should be there for cleanliness in the future. You could pass in the case ID and then write that to a reference field for the ultimate graphness. <laughs> you can change the labels like, yeah, no, that's totally what I should be doing. And I should be mapping that. Yeah, yeah, like, let's get it working. Let's get it working. Uh, and then we'll, we'll extend because like I've got, I need to, uh, eat some lunch here in a few minutes before a, a meeting at the uh, at the top of the ne at the bottom of the next hour. Top of the next hour. Top of the next hour. Uh, or is it a document ID? Yeah, I mean it, it could be like I feel like case uh, the case ID could go in there and then that could be mapped over to a set of documents so that in the future when I add a new interaction I could uh put in there the uh the id right this id here for the uh the twitch interaction 
and then it would be its own array that I could pull in in other ways too. And I could like play with that data in various ways, the, the least of which would be tracking the analytics for it. Um, so yeah, I, I, like I definitely think this is, this is not final product, definitely not. I think, I think that could be super cool, but I think that's, I think, I think setting it up as a document and referencing that document inside the array, that way we can build all sorts of stuff around it uh, would be uh, definitely the way to go. Uh, let's see. All right, so we also, uh, let me, I'm gonna pass in the entirety of, do I wanna pass in all of that? Or, I also wanna pass in the user, right? Cause I wanna grab that user as well. Um, so let's set that. The user that redeemed it is what we're passing in there. And that's just, that's actually just a string, I'm pretty sure. Um, so metric push, so-and-so, you know, it was redeemed by so-and-so. User and user. And again, like right now I've got a lot of this, I've got this compose screen function, uh, which is like an abstracted out way of handling these and all of them go up to pixel and pixel does what he's supposed to do there. Um, so I probably need to do the same thing here and not have to like have this on each of those screens. Like there's probably ways of breaking that up in a better way. Um, so yeah, so now I'm passing the user object, which my function's not ready to accept. Point type user. Uh, we also want to pass the user object in here. Uh, and then let's log out all of that. Uh, was it console dir? I think gives us a little better look at that. Um, all right, nothing should happen, but let's see what happens when I redeem a CSS fun fact. User is not defined. Why is user not defined? Oh, oh, because I haven't actually passed that in up here. Excellent. Yep. That's fine. Point type. All right. Try that again. not the object that I was expecting. Where's my user? Did my user not come through there? All right. Point type, we know point type came through console dir user. The best case of debugging is console in your code. All right, one more try. Let's see, test. See, it's not actually, uh, do me a favor, anyone in chat, I'm not going to, well, I'm choose something cheap and redeem it. Um, this is where we start pushing type. Uh, don't make me get into TypeScript, Canute. Don't make me get into TypeScript. Yeah. Um, let's see. User is just the string and I'm not getting my user. I'm wondering if my user object doesn't come through properly. Although, wait, 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 wait. Um, chat actions, user. Yeah, see that's supposed to be there. Was that firing? Was Pixel putting my name in there? Um, tech Etcher, don't, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll do it. Uh, let, let me test another one here. See, because it says Brian L. Robinson fed me. So we're getting the user object. We, we're getting that string, but it's not being passed properly into, um, into that, right? So why isn't it? So yeah, I, we, don't, we don't need chat to, to do a message because uh, we're getting it. My compose screen is, is pushing it up there. I wonder what's my compose screen doing? Compose screen. It's just taking the user object and not doing anything with it, which is interesting. Um, oh, because I'm doing that all in the message, right? Uh, it's the second param here and the third when you, oh. 
Well, that's because I'm passing it into my exported function, which is passing it into another another function, I think. Um, where was that? That was a metric push. Aha, no, you're right, you're right. Uh, yeah, 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 so no, uh, the point type and the user are the only two functions on this exported function, or the only two arguments on this exported function. There are three inside of register engagement info because I need to pass the stream data into that to um, to go to the document type. Yeah, that sounds right. Uh, is it undefined? Is that what I'm getting there? Or is it nothing? That's also interesting. See, like that's coming through as Nothing. All right, register engagement. We pass in stream data, which we're gonna use in the future. We pass in point type, which we are getting back out. CSS fun fact. And then we're passing in user and we're getting nothing. Which is interesting. My engagement stats for this episode are going to be off the charts. Uh, but, 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 but. What's up? Why is that like that? Why is that working? Why didn't that work before? Oh, yeah. All right. So we want to create an object out of this that we can pass into our array. Is it copying out? But I thought, and I could be wrong, and I have to like, let's, let's undo the code real fast, because you might be right that it didn't like, yeah, maybe it didn't like the, the dir, maybe it, well, yeah, I don't know. Theoretically, I had it up here as a second argument on there, and it should have should have done both of those, but I could be wrong about that. Uh, const of uh, engagement data equals an array that is, uh, what do we want to call these? We'll call it um, redemption. Let's keep it simple. Uh, point type. It's point type. And uh, user. Let's call this one username. Uh, is user. And then log is engagement data. So we're going to pass this to a new field. Can we do it in the next like five to 10 minutes? I don't know if we're going to get there, but I feel like we might. Oops, it would help if I didn't lock my screen in the middle of it. So we have an object. The object is not the right one. There it is. Point type, CSS fun fact, username, Brian L. Robinson. Um, so we can then define out a new field uh, in a very similar way to what we, we, we did up here. Um, and there goes my other headphones. So hopefully the music keeps going for y'all. We'll see how that goes. Um, it should. It should still keep going. Um, all right. Uh, so we're going to call in our sanity client. And then we are going to uh, patch our document, which is our stream data dot ID. And then we will set, if missing, the, uh, what do we wanna call this? Engagement array, engagement array um, to an array, is that, what's that syntax gonna look like? Uh, see set if missing okay yeah yeah so it's an object first and foremost where we'll set that to a blank array and then 
adding elements to array. I love when I can just type in and get what I want. I want to insert uh, after the last one. So yeah, this is basically exactly what we're going to get, the same, same kind of thing. Um, and we'll probably want to set a unique ID on each of these. So we'll also grab this as well, uh, which this uh, nanoid, is that what we're going to call it, uh, is just a way of getting like secure, good ID things. Uh, not technically, not technically correct description there. Um, reviews, inserts. So yeah, we'll use the insert uh, into. I will do it. So it takes the first parameter. We want it to be after. Second parameter will be our uh, position. So we want it to be after. Sorry for the switching back and forth. The new thing that we're adding after engagement array last, negative one. And was that, that was a string. Uh, and then we pass that. Why is that coming through in array syntax? Let's see, add a key unique within the array. I guess, I guess we could be adding multiple at that point um, to it. Uh, so I wonder if you can just add an object. Let's, let's play. Uh, so then object that we're gonna be adding in there that will be, we'll need an ID key that will be, we'll go ahead and grab this, this thing and we'll require that up top and install it. Uh, npm install nanoid. All right, so the key, we'll fire that to get a new random key in there. And then uh, our title will be, again, like we need to be passing this as data in the future. Um, but for now, for our proof of concept, we'll pass it our uh, engagement. I, actually, I guess I didn't actually need to, uh, no, I can just call that entire object. Do you structure that object in here? Yeah, that'll be better. Uh, engage, engagement data, I think. There's an error, what's my error? Expression expected, comma? Okay, so maybe it does require this to be an array of objects. Nope. All right, let's take a look. We've got sandy client dot, dot, dot. We go into our object, add a key, Why isn't it liking that? Oh, because I probably, yeah, okay. We'll just, that's fine. Um, I thought I could destructure inside that, but apparently not. Uh, so point type is engagement data dot point type. And the username is, uh, I really think I want to like keep it as an object, but we'll figure out other stuff later. We'll, we'll make it better later. All right, save that. Then we also, oh, we need to commit it. And then let's go ahead and get our then statement from the other one so that we don't typo any of that. And that goes here. We get a response, the patch happened with the response, catch if any errors happen, and cross our fingers because there's not much time left. Uh, but look, hey, in the meantime, check that out. 16 engagements all tracked on this inside of Studio. Super cool. Um, all right, let's do an engagement test here. 
Testing CSS fun fact. Oh, yep, didn't actually require nanoid. Uh, const nanoid equals require nanoid. Thanks, Knut. I appreciate it. It's it is interesting and like exciting in like all sorts of fun and weird ways. Like, there's so much you can do around a lot of this. Uncut type error. Oh, did it not rebuild? Let's. Which semicolon tech gadget? Like I'm okay. Yeah, I see it. I'm. I'm working through some personal hangups around semicolons. I like semicolons. I really do. Um, I know that they're not required and I know that a lot of style guides are moving away from it. So I'm working on moving away from the semicolons. Uh, so I, I'm still going to probably semicolon the end of most lines. Um, but yeah, at least like on my like requirements, right? Like eh, that, that probably doesn't need semicolons. Um, but anyway, let's see. Let's see if rebuilding fixed our issue there. Refresh the page. See, this is fun fact. Type error. Nanoid is not a function. Maybe I should, you know, look up the details of how to use that package. Uh, Well, Nanoid should be inside of my um, package.json and all that. So it, it should resolve itself from my node modules, um, I thought. Uh, let's see. I'm probably, maybe I had the wrong Nanoid. Uh, maybe they have moved, yeah, named exports. Let's actually see what Nanoid wants me to do instead of the docs and then if things have changed, I'll go in and change the docs. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll try to do that this afternoon, Knut, just so you know. Uh, let's see. Refresh the page. Insert items argument, which must be an array. I thought I fixed that. I thought I made it an array. Maybe I didn't save that piece. I didn't. I thought about doing it and then I, and then I just forgot. So we were testing that anyway. That was totally me testing that. That was, you know, I just wanted to see what would happen. It's totally not me forgetting what I was doing. Uh, all right, let's see. Cleanliness is next to and all that. All right. Redeem our pixel points. All right. Two patches happened. I could probably make, turn that into one in, into one call. It probably would be better. I'm not going to do that today, but that is probably a better way of handling that. Do both those patches at the same time. Uh, let's see. We now have this, which is exactly what I expected to have, where it's like, hey, by the way, I don't know what to do with that. Um, so we will uh, go in, and I've got somebody calling my phone uh, from Florida. I don't know anyone in Florida. Do you have unlimited points to redeem? Yes, so uh, to answer James's question, uh, if you're interested in streaming, I'm also happy to like answer questions about that sort of thing. Uh, when you are in your stream manager session, you can see down here that you've got um, your points and it's actually, it's got this little, it's got the infinity, right? You've got as many points as you want to redeem uh, specifically so you can test all this stuff. Uh, I'm not, I don't have time, unfortunately, to go in and fix uh, Studio's issue down there uh, and create that new schema for it, but um, Super cool that we got that far and we're recording that data. I'm just not displaying it currently. Uh, so yeah, now when we go back in just so we can prove that point. Um, we'll have 
multiple things inside this array. See, two things happen, got a key. I'm not passing the user in, which is frustrating since we did all that stuff before and it seemed to be working, but that's fine. I'll save that for another day. We'll figure it out. Um, cool, I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek and see who's streaming that we might want to raid. I know I don't need to refresh, but sometimes I feel like I just need to. It makes me feel better about things. Uh, looks like the only channel I got up right now is Julie Strader again, which we uh, streamed over to last week. And I think we should do that again. Uh, she's learning development in live streaming, which is super cool. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and set that up. Uh, looks like she's doing some 3D modeling, which is cool. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and set that up, and we'll see you next week. I'll be doing a stream. I think we're going to be doing an official Sandy stream as well next week, so be sure to keep an eye on that. Follow me here for that, for um, knowing when I go live. Follow Sanity underscore IO for when that is going live. Uh, and, yeah, we'll raid over. I'm going to pull that up, and I'll see you uh, next week at some point, y'all. Thanks for tuning in.